Hello, so in this video we're going to talk again about martingales because martingales are sort of so fundamental to financial maths and really we want to kind of talk about it in as much detail as we possibly can. Okay, so uh, really at the central at the heart of a martingale is this idea of a fair gain and we're going to explore this kind of idea of a fair gain. Um, so a martingale is really just a fair gain. Okay, it's really the heart of a fair game. And so what we're going to do in order to explore this is we're going to go through conditional probability or remind ourselves of conditional uh, probability. Okay. Then we're going to explore conditional expectation. Okay. Then we're going to explore conditional expectation before then bring it back to Mart to the idea of Martingale. Okay. So that's kind of the plan of this video. So first things first, we're going to explore a little bit of conditional probability. Oops. Conditional probability okay so this is kind of at the heart you know we're going to explore this a little bit okay so basically all the conditional probability is, is it's no longer just a single probability it's a probability that one thing will happen it's now a probability based on something else having already happened so i'm going to show you by an example okay so let's say that we've got um a pack of cards we've got a pack of cards so there's 52 cards in a pack 52 cards okay now a is that the card is black Okay, so A is a black card. The probability that A is a that um, you know we've got a black card. Um, B is the probability that the um, or the event rather that the card is a diamond. It's a diamond. So it's not so much the probability. This is just the the event. So A is the event that we get a black card. B is the event that we get a diamond card. And C is the event that we end up with a club. So club card okay so we've got four spades we've got you know we've got a pack of 52 cards uh, we've got four suits spades clubs diamonds and hearts okay and we've got a defined as the event that we get a black card b is the event we get a diamond card and c is the event that we get a club card okay so then we can talk about probability so uh, the probability of b so the probability of getting a diamond card well what's that going to be well that's going to be you know there are how many suits are there there's 13 cards in the suit so there's 13 cards per suit so this is 13 in 52 so it's a quarter so we just get one out of the four suits is a is a is a diamond okay likewise we can define the probability of um of c so the probability of c is that um we end up with a club card so again it's still going to be a quarter it's going to be 14 and 52 so we can define it as a quarter okay it's one out of the four suits okay we can also talk about the probability that it's going to be a black card. So the probability of A, it's going to be a black card. Well, that's going to be half. So it's either going to be a club or it's going to be a diamond. So that's going to be 26 out of the 52 cards. Sorry, not diamond, a uh, club or a spade. So therefore, it's going to be 26 out of the 52 cards, which is exactly half of the pack. Okay. But then we can also talk about conditional probability. So the probability of B, given that we already have a black card. So the probability of getting a diamond card, given that we already have a black card, well, fairly obviously, that's going to be zero because a diamond is a red card. So given that we already have a black card in our hands, then there's no chance that it's gonna be a diamond, okay? Then again, we can talk about the probability of C given A. Okay, so what is the probability of C given A? So the probability that we're gonna get a club card given that we already have a black card, okay? Well, we already have a black card. So therefore, we've got a choice of 26 different cards. So we already know it's out of 26 possible cards because we know we've got a black card already. So we've already eliminated half of the pack. We've already eliminated the diamonds and the hearts. So we've either got a spade or a club in our hands. Um, so therefore, there's you know if it's if it's a club card, clubs contribute to thirteen out of those out of the pack. So therefore, it's thirteen and twenty six. Or you can think about it as a half. And I I kind of started to allude, allude to the fact that either if we know we've got a black card in our hands, then we know it's either going to be a spade or it's going to be a club. So therefore, it's going to be one out of two possibilities. Okay, so you can think about it that way if you want as well. Okay, then we can also talk about, say, for example, probability of B given C. So what's that? The probability that we get a diamond card given that we already have a club card. Well, that's obviously going to be zero. Okay, because if we already have a diamond card in our hand, then there's no chance that we can get a club card. Okay, and then likewise, we can have the probability of A given C. A given C. So that is the probability of having a black card given that we have a club card already. Well, that's going to be certainty because we know that a club card is a black card. Um, sorry, we know, yeah. We know that a club card is black, so um, if we know we already have a club card in our hands, then we know it's going to be black because we know we've got a club card in our hands. That's given certainty. Um, but we also have, we can also define the probability of A 
given B, okay, so this is what's known as Bayes' formula, uh, so the probability of A happening, given B has already happened, okay, is given by the probability of A and B happening, so the probability of A and B happening over the probability of just B happening, okay, providing the probability of B is not equal to zero, because if this is equal to zero, then therefore we're going to get an infinite probability, which obviously can't happen, because the probability has to lie between zero and one, okay? So this is Bayes' formula, basically. Um, okay, um, and we can also define as well, we can also define the probability of C giving A, C given A, uh, that's going to be the probability of C and A happening over the probability of A, yep, over the probability of A. Um, and then if we do a little bit of uh, rearranging, so this is kind of like, you know, we can, we can get this out of just using that as well, okay? If we just rearrange this slightly, if we just rearrange this slightly, so maybe if I just get rid of that because this isn't actually, uh, we need it, I can bring it up later. So then if I just rearrange this, we have the probability of A given B times the probability of B, so take this probability of B up here, times the probability of B happening. That's got to be equal to what's left, so uh, probability of A and B happening. Okay, probability of A and B happening. Okay, and we can also note that in general, the probability of A given B is equal to, in general, we have the probability of A given B. So these are just identities, okay? Um, you know, if you don't understand this, go and find a video, go and find out about them. Um, this is the same as the probability of B given A times the probability of A, okay? So if A and B are independent, if A and B are independent, so if A and B are independent, and the probability of A happening, given that B has already happened, is just going to be equal to the probability of A, okay? because they're independent, so therefore these things are the same. So the probability of A given B is just going to be equal to the probability of A. So I'm just pulling up some, some notations here. Okay. Um, okay, so let's start talking about conditional expectations now. So this is conditional probability that we just talked about. Let's start talking about conditional expectations. Conditional expectations. So now we're talking about the expectation of something conditional on something else has already happened. So we're going to we're going to use the notation of probability uh, again. So we're going to actually use this notation here. So let me just draw it out and I'll talk you through it. Okay. So this is basically a binomial tree. Okay. We start at s naught. Okay. Start at s naught. This value here is going to be s one. So S10, remember? This one is going to be S1 down, so S11. Okay. This probability associated on each arm, on each arm, so this is the probability uh, that time zero we move up, that from time zero we move up. And this is the probability from time zero we move down. Okay. Likewise, let's move look about these probabilities here, 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 and here. So this is the probability that at time one we move up and then up again. And this is the probability that at time one, we've moved up and then we're moving down. So this is this probability. Here, this is the probability that at time one, we've, uh, we, move, um, we move down, so down and then up. Okay, and then we've got the probability, uh, so one of down and then down again. So one, one. Okay, this point here is going to be S2 up up and this is going to be s2 up down this is going to be s2 down up and this is going to be s2 down down okay uh, and then this probability here is going to be probability 2 of up 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 yep this is going to be probability 2 of up up down this is going to be probability 2 of uh, what we up down up this is going to be probability of 2 of uh, what we got so up down down is going to be probability two of down, down. Um, that one should be one because that's down, uh, down, and that should be zero. <laughs> Sorry, that notation was slightly wrong for this one. Um, yes, yeah, so it should be down up. This should be down up. Uh, what have we got up. Okay, this is the probability two of down up down. This is the probability two of down, down, up, and this is probability two of down, 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 okay? And this is going to be denoted by S3, 
three of up 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 s three of up up down s three of up down up this is probability of s three of what have we got we got up down down uh, s three uh, what have we got down up up s three of down up down s three of down down up s3 of down 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 okay so this is just a notation which we're going to do now which we're going to use in a moment right so the reason why i went through conditional probability before um is because we're going to use conditional probability to define conditional expectations so all it basically is all it basically is um conditional expectations all it basically is is that we've got it conditioned on we've got it now conditioned on a filtration so on some history um we've got it conditioned on a filtration rather than just an event so the probability of share the probability of a share will be conditioned on a filtration rather than an event now okay so it can be conditioned on a filtration rather than an event which is why then we use conditional expectations so basically the probability of a share so the probability of a share, okay, which is why I went through all this notation above here. Um, so the probability of a share, um, given a certain amount of information. So the probability of a share will be given a certain amount of information because obviously, you know, you have all the, you'll have a history with a share. Okay, you'll, when you buy a share, you'll have a history of what's happened in the past, right? And that it, that can that history will be defined by some filtration. Let's call it F n. Okay, so the probability of a share is the expectation of the share at some time point given some information up to that point. And that's all it is. That's all condition the expectation is. Okay, so for example, uh, this thing, so E of S3 given, so the probability of a share uh, time three given um, some information up to time one, okay, um, of up, okay, so we, we know we've gone up, is just equal to what's it equal to let's go back up to our diagram so what are we considering we're considering the share at time three so s3 okay we're considering these s3s over here so all of these time values down here considering all of those given we have all of the information up until f1 so we've got all of this information so we know whether we're here or we know whether we're here okay so therefore it's going to be the probability of either we go along this one and along this one to end up here or we go, say, along this one and then this one to end up here. Or we go along this one and this one to end up here. Or we go along this one and this one to end up here. And likewise, we, we can do the same for the, for, the, for the ones below. Okay, so basically we end up with P1, 0, 0, times P2, 0, 0, 0. Um, and then we end up at this point here. So let's write that down. This is going to be the first one. We'll end up with P1. 0, 0 times P2, 0, 0, 0, and we end up at the share point S3, 0, 0, 0, okay? Or we can end up here, or we can end up here. So this is just exactly the same as probability trees that you've been used to sort of um, since, since GCSE, really. So you end up, so you can go here, and then we go down here. So we end up with P1, 0, 0 times P2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, sorry, and then we end up at S3, 0, 0, 0, 1. Anyway, so either or we can end up here. So remember, we write or by this one and and by, you know, times. So or is a plus um, and is a times. So what was it? It was P1, 0, 0 times P2, 0, 0, 1 times S3, 0, 0, 1. OK, or we can end up at this point here or we can end up at this point here. So in other words, we go P1, P1, 0, 0 sorry, P101, okay, times P2010. So we go along here and we end up at S3010. Okay, so let's write that down. So we end up with, or we can do P101 times P2010 times S3010. Uh, or the final one that we can end up at is here. So we're basically, we're given we start here, given we start here, we can either end up here, 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 or we can end up here, which is what we're just about to do. So P101 times P2011, uh, and then we end up at S3010. Uh, 
zero one one. Okay, so that is P one zero one times P two zero one one times S three zero one one. Okay, so this is the expectation that we're at a point at S three given we have information that we're that at, at, at time one, so we have all the information at time one, we're at the up position. So in other words, we're at this position here at time one. Okay, so this is all this is basically saying, it's just notation. Okay, and that's what it's equal to. It's equal to all of that. Okay, so whatever that is, so basically you can plug it in. Um, notice that we can do exactly the same thing for down. I'll leave you to do the same thing for down. So in other words, if we know for definite that we've got all the information, so we know we're here, then basically we can either end up here, 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 or here. But I'll leave you to do that. And I'll just write the answer down to just check that you make sure you get the right thing. So there we are. There's the answer. Just make sure you get the right thing. Okay. So now what we want to do is we've got the idea of conditional probability. We've got the idea of now conditional expectation. Okay. Now what we're going to do is use those ideas. So basically we use the, the idea of conditional probability to build this idea of conditional expectation. So the idea that we're at a particular time, that you know, given we're at a particular time value, where can we end up? Okay. So if we're here, we're fairly obviously we can't end up over here. Okay. Likewise, if we're down here, we can't end up sort of over here. So if we're down here, we can't end up over here because it's just impossible for this to happen. Okay. So basically, you know, we use conditional probability to build the idea of conditional expectation. Conditional expectation is just conditional probability based on a filtration um, rather than an event. Okay. So now what we're going to do is how do these things connect to the Nartingale? So remember, we, remember we could define a filtered probability space as this. So we had omega, we had omega. Okay, which is if you like all the prob all the things that can happen in my house, right? And then we also we had sort of some filtered probability. So we had f n, so the set of all f n, um, where n is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Then we had all of the all of the possible events that can happen in the world. Okay. And then also we had the probability. So this is a filtered probability space. Okay. Um, now. What we want to basically show is that uh, we want to basically define a martingale. So basically what we're saying is that expectation, the expectation. So first of all, we need to define that um, it's non, it doesn't go off to infinity. So in other words, the, the, the random variable, we want to show this is a martingale, this random variable xn, we want to show that's a martingale. So therefore, it's got to be less than infinity. It's got to be some finite value. So it doesn't go shooting off to infinity. Okay. Um, and remember what we want to show. So we want to basically show that you know we get um, we get given all of this information. Let's say we get all given all this information up to n, okay, and we want to predict what's going to happen at n. We want to predict what's going to happen at n. So in other words, we get given this information x n. So we get given all the information up to here, um, and we define all the information up to here as f n. If you like, this is this is if you like a book, okay. Or sort of like your internet search history. Yeah, FN is like your internet search history. It gives you all the information that you've ever had, that you've ever looked at on the internet, um, or you've ever accessed on the internet. It gives you all the information you've ever accessed on the internet up to that point in time. So it gives you, you know, all of the information that you need. Okay, so FN is, if you like, your internet search history. It gives you all of the information up to that point in time, which you've, which you've seen. Okay, and then XM. Okay, so basically what we want to try and do is predict what's going to happen at xm. Well, the expectation, what's going to happen at xm, given that we know all the information up to up to this point in time, so given we know all the information up to this point in time, fn, okay, well, that's just going to be equal to whatever the value is at xn. Okay, because obviously the martingale says, the martingale says that what's going to happen at xm, so say if this is tomorrow, xm is tomorrow, well, the best guess of what's going to happen tomorrow is what's going to happen, is what's happening today. Yeah, so this is all this is saying. So basically, we know all the information up to xn, okay? Well, then we can't predict the future, so we're just going to say, well, it's just going to be the same as today. So it's given all the information, you know, we can predict what's going to happen based on the information that we've got, okay? Um, so. So in other words, a martingale, a martingale is given... Um, with respect to, so in other words, it's, you know, if we define a martingale, it has to be given with respect to a filtration, filtration, okay, and a probability. So this is how we define a martingale. It's defined with respect to a filtration and a probability. 
filters. That's how we define a, a martingale. Now, that's a problem because, you know, it's normally the natural filtration, normally the natural filtration. Um, but the problem comes with probability. Natural filtration is fine, but the no problem comes with the probability because that's a measure. OK, and often we can model situations and change and modify probabilities. OK, um, so therefore we call that, um, you know, it, it becomes very, very difficult because basically probability basically makes, makes, it, makes it very difficult. So what we have to do is we have to try and model a situation. OK, because not always, we won't always have a probability defining a particular situation. Or it may be very difficult to work out that probability of that situation because there's lots of things going on. OK, um, so therefore what we have to do is we have to, is we have to basically kind of model the situation. We have to basically produce some kind of model for the situation. And from that, we can basically pull out a probability. But it's not the actual probability. It's what's known as a synthetic probability. OK, and that synthetic probability is kind of a, a made up probability. Now. That still works very well. That still works very well, even though the probability is made up. Okay, it still works very well. The synthetic probability, and we'll actually meet synthetic probability in a little bit. Okay, so I talked about this idea of fair gain. So now I'm going to try and draw everything back together and try and bring it back to a fair gain. So at the beginning of this section, we mentioned that martingales are considered a model for fair games. Okay, so basically, what I want to do is suppose that you play a game. Okay, and that the random variable x m. So the random variable x m. Is just the value of the game, so just the value of uh, value of the game. Okay, so value of the game. Okay, and if you like, the x m minus x n is if you like the winnings. Okay, the winnings which you get from the game. So um, which you get at the game. So if you like, um, you know, for some time frame, then essentially, you know, it's the same kind of thing which is going on here. So we have, you know, this is m, and this is n, or is it the other way around? No, it's the other way around. Yep, this is n. This is M, okay, so this is XN, and this is XM, okay. Well, basically, uh, this is the value at the end of the game. So say, like, if you're playing Monopoly, it's the number of houses or hotels, I can't remember what it is, the amount which you have, basically, your, your worth at the end of the game. But then you have to take away, you know, you have to take away something, um, you know, you have to take away your costs, for example. Then your winnings are just going to be what's left. So you're just your winnings are going to be this thing here, okay. So uh, the expectation... So the expectation of your winnings, so xm minus xn, okay, given that you have all information up to that point in time, up to fn, okay, you have all the information up to that point in time, um, is just going to be, is just going to be um, the same as the expectation of xm given uh, fn, okay, minus minus xn. Because basically you know this, you know this, okay? Because this is a linear operator, right? So maybe if I just write it out properly. So this thing here is a linear operator. I'm just using algebra now. This thing here is a linear operator, which means that it can be the expectation of this thing given Fn, and it can also be minus, use this minus here, okay? The expectation of Xn minus this thing here. Okay, so let's get rid of all those scribbles there. So hopefully you can see it a little better. So this is the expectation of Xn given Fn. All right. Well, this thing here, what we're basically saying is, what is the expectation? What is the expectation at this time period, given that we know everything that's going to happen at this time period? Well, we know what that is. We know what that is. Because what this is saying, let me just say what it is again. This is saying, what is the expectation of the value at that time? What is the value of that expectation at n? OK, given that we know what's happening at n. So therefore, that given we know what's happening at n, this is just going to be xn. Right, because we know what that value is. We don't need to take an expectation of it because we're given, we know what happens at that point in time. So it's just going to be xn. Okay. Um, well, therefore, therefore, let's look at this thing now. Let's look at this thing now. Now I've defined this. I think it was up here, was it? There we go. The expectation of xm, given that we know everything that happens up at this point in time, is just going to be xn. So this is exactly what we've got. Okay, I've just taught you through that example. Let's just talk through the logic once more. So what is the value tomorrow, given that we know everything that happens today? It's just going to be what's happening today. So therefore, this thing here, this thing in here is xn. This thing here is xn. So what do we end up with? Sorry, this is xn. This is what do we end up with? We end up xn minus xn. That's going to be zero. Okay, so in other words, what we're saying is that the winnings... The winnings, because this is this is denoting the winnings. What are the winnings? What are the expectation of the winnings, given that we know that point in time? So the winnings, xm minus xn, is zero. Now, this is a fair game. This is a fair game. This is the whole idea behind a fair game. The whole idea behind a fair game is that the winnings are zero. 
because if the winnings are zero, then that means that there are no winners, fine. But more crucially, what makes it a fair game is there's also no losers. Because if nobody wins anything, then therefore nobody must lose anything either. Okay, because if you think about it, if you take money off of somebody, then somebody's losing out. Okay, you may be winning, but somebody else is losing out. So the idea of a fair game is that nobody takes anything off anybody. So this is the whole idea behind a fair game, that the winnings are zero. Okay, um, now just talk this through, um, you know, just to make a very quick comment. In finance, uh, the filtration that we look at is connected to Brownian emotion. So basically we've looked at filtration um, kind of in some detail, in natural filtration, such like that. Uh, it's just basically a flow of information up to a certain point of time. Okay, so we talk about, you know, I talked about filtration was, if you like, just a, um, just if you like, your internet search history. Okay, so we've got all the information up to a certain point in time. Uh, well, the filtration is th that we look at in finance is connected to Brownian motion. Okay, so filtration is connected to this Brownian motion, and it's continuous. Okay, it's continuous filtration.